Good morning, everyone, and aloha kakahiaka, which is the Hawaiian way of saying good morning. So we are actually about five minutes prior uh, to the actual broadcast. If you are not watching this live right now, and live right now is it's 8.56 Hawaii time on May 8th. 2020. If that's not the time, you can actually fast forward this video probably about five minutes or so to the five minute mark. And that's you're going to get the actual broadcast right now. We're just sort of getting this thing warmed up. Going to probably have a little bit of small talk with my with my good buddies over here. Uh, so how how what's what's going on, girls? Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? Anybody here, Dylan? Why don't you go first and unmute? Or, okay, Scott. Un, okay, Dylan, unmute yourself. I gotta order. You, I have to order you guys around some more here. <laughs> we gotta warm. We're warming up. That's how we're warming we're up. Warming, that's, that's what this is. This is the four minute warm up. This is the off show show. Everybody, go, Dylan. What's going on? Oh, it's just a beautiful day over here in Kona. It's not a not a cloud in the sky, and uh, another beautiful day to be alive during odd times during some odd times and jim just kind of kicked in on us already yeah it is okay so so dylan so we have to make this a tradition now so tell us the shirt that you, so describe the shirt that you're wearing now you're you're ready for this one oh uh, yeah so this is this is a living hula shirt and it and uh these this is a local designer right out of, of kona and uh she's a hula um kumu and has a halal here and also has a clothing line so livinghula.com if you want to check it out they make Primarily a lot of women's clothing. Um, they do men's aloha shirts and they got a great Instagram page. If you want to look up Living Hula on Instagram, they got a uh, really nice stuff, really uh, good models. And actually my my son just started modeling for them. So you'll see him on their Instagram page to modeling the the boys' shirts. So oh man, get get the get the boy started on a, on an early early modeling uh, yeah. career there. That's that's a that's a good move. <laughs> And of course, I get a call in the middle of this thing, so which is why we're all practicing. Silence your phones. All right, good. Uh, and now I got music. Man, this is. I definitely need to. Hopefully, you guys can't hear my 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 music coming over here right now. Okay, we're warming up still. It's eight fifty-seven. All right, so it's uh, Scott's turn. Scott, what's going on, buddy? Uh, did you guys catch the full moon last night? Oh, the full, I, I caught, I didn't look at it. I didn't directly look at the full moon. You're not supposed to look at the full moon because it'll turn you into a werewolf. So I kind of stay away from that. Well, I, my heart was pounding a little, or racing a little bit last night. So maybe that was part of the problem, but yeah, no, uh, beautiful. It came up right over diamond head. Um, and then just did an open ocean swim this morning. So life's starting out pretty good. In fact, a uh, turtle swam on while I was doing my swim. So. So I guess, have have you noticed um has has the water uh, quality changed at all because there's not that many people going into the water at all it's pretty much the same yeah there's a swell right now so it's all churned up so I couldn't mm. see more than three four feet in front of me but it, it was nice nice to get in the water start good way to start the day oh man I'll tell you I just Always. actually I, I just yeah right I just went uh I just went body surfing yesterday at Makapu'u for like the first time in months and <laughs> it just was like the most therapeutic thing I could have ever done in my life it was just the the greatest the Speaking greatest of, have you ever read the book Blue Mind you ever heard of it no uh, no I have not uh, a buddy of mine turned me on to it and it's it's common sense stuff but it's basically kind of it's hard to read because some of it's scientific but it it's the, you know, being on, near, in, around the water and, and the benefits that it has to us in our lives and things. And it really resonates, especially with people in Hawaii who are so connected with the water and get out there and stuff. That's, it's a good read if you ever get a chance to check it out. A lot of common sense stuff. It's, it resonates with, like, Makapu is probably my favorite body surfing spot, too. I get out there. I always carry fins in the back of my trunk and a pair of board shorts and a towel. So if I'm doing work, I'm like, ah, I need a break. Stop that's a, a jump in. That, that, that is a, that, that's a why that's a wise move. Now, Dylan, don't you go? Don't you do a lot of fishing? Don't you? I, I've I've seen your 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 post every so often with 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 fish kind of stuff. Yeah, I made a pretty smart move and married a fisherman's daughter. So um, it's the best situation where I don't have to ever own a boat or take care of a boat, but I have access to one at any time. So uh, yeah, we go fishing with Grandpa all the time. Um, it's been a while. He recently had some sh shoulder surgery, so he's been out of commission, but. My wife's brother also um, has a big boat, so we go at him from time to time. But yeah, it's you know Kona, some of the best fishing on the planet. So, um, and, and I don't know if anybody's been watching the the deadliest catch bloodlines, but uh, Jeff Silva, who's on that show, is a good friend of ours. So that gives you a good 
idea of what fish that's, is like. that's uh, totally awesome yeah, man so look guys it is it is that time it's 9 a.m mm -hmm. hawaii time and we promise everyone we're going to start and we are starting so this is living in hawaii.com uh, I went, went with my really good friends that were here last week. Uh, we don't have to go through an intro again. If you want, you should watch that show to get their background. We're just going to get right into it. We're talking about, uh, you know, I, I think the idea that we all had was that we, uh, uh, Scott and Dylan and I, uh, we kind of had a regular meeting uh, every Friday to talk about kind of how things are coming along. And Dylan had this idea once. He said, you know, we just record this from now on uh, and put it out there. I thought, yeah, you know, that was a good idea. So that was actually the start of this. So that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna we're, we're we're bringing you folks in on a conversation between the three of us. So this is like guys, uh, Scott and Dylan. This is our regular Friday conversation. It's gonna go where it's ever gonna go. We did a we got a little bit of structure over here, a little bit of planning, but it's really a conversation between the three of us. And what I'm gonna also attempt to do is to invite the rest of you that are watching us live to be also part of the conversation. So if you've got some comments, put them on the Facebook page. Like over here, sort of, Shani uh, had, had had given us a shout out. We had Jim who 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 came in earlier. Uh, put your comments up there. I'll try to keep track of that as best I can. And uh, uh, like Megan over here from the Big Island, Aloha, Megan MacArthur. Um, and we'll try to bring in your your comments and questions in on the conversation. So with that, uh, let's kind of get rolling. Uh, here's the basically what we. Well, we kind of figured on what the topics were going to be for today is to talk about basically April, uh, do a little bit of sales analysis in April and find out kind of, you know, what was hit hardest? Are there any bright spots? Essentially, you know, based on what we saw happening in, in April and based on all the news, you know, where do we see kind of things going? Um, who wants to go for it? I know, Dylan, why don't you kind of lead this off? Because you had a couple of, uh, should I go to the next slide on, on this, Dylan? Uh, and then you could kind of hit this, or how do you guys, how do you guys want, want to do this? Who wants to go first? Let's, let's, yeah, let's two, do that. Two, two more down. We can hit the big island real quick. Two more down. There we go. So, yeah, so this is just a real simple slide of some kind of top-level data points that we always look at when we're looking at previous month's data and then comparing it to the year prior. So just to kind of explain the slide, this is the April... 2020 sales data versus the April 2019 sales data. So we can comp compare what the numbers were this month versus a year ago. And it gives us a little bit of a perspective on change. And for the last like really, you know, eight years or so, we've seen kind of steady increases. I mean, there's been some volatility when there was the eruption here on the Big Island in 2018. Um, but as we've been saying for the last couple of months, we really weren't going to see the effects of COVID until April because most of the sales that occurred in March when everything kind of started to take effect lockdown wise, those sales in the real estate sales cycle started in January before there was really any concern. So things that go into escrow in January and February usually close in March. So the, the closings in April would have been affected by late, late February and through the month of March. So we're, we're seeing definitely a a slowdown and a change, especially in closed sales. So this is just single family homes on the Big Island. And this, if you break this data down regionally, it's much worse on the west side because that's where you have more of the second home buyer and the, the, the mainland buyer who obviously couldn't come here in March to look for property. So um, there was a 15% decline in the number of closed sales in April this year versus April of last year. And then the, the median price, actually, I looked into this to check because it seems so off, but the median price in April 2019 was kind of uh, an anomaly. It was low for the time. I mean, normally it was closer to um, 300000 during that time frame in the year. So this number is a little bit be deceiving. The median price actually this month is lower than the median price last month. So there was a little bit of a drop. So if we look at it compared year over year, it looks kind of deceiving. That there's this humongous increase in, in median price, but there wasn't the, the important uh, thing to consider here is there wasn't a big change. Uh, median price pretty much stayed the same as it's been the last six months or so. So it, there was a reduction in the number of homes that sold, but there wasn't a huge reduction in price. But there was a huge reduction in the number of listings. And we've been we talked about this last week, and we've been looking at and preparing for this that the number of new listings fell by forty five percent. So literally half the number of listings are on the market right now than were a year ago, and that's mainly due to sellers just being uneasy about the market right now and holding back. But as we talked a little bit about last week, and I've been telling seller clients, 
that's not necessarily a bad thing because now you have less competition. So back a year ago when you know somebody was looking in an area and maybe they had 10 or 15 homes to look at that fit their criteria, now they may only have six or seven or eight. So you have less competition and less stuff for people to look at. And buyers are still out there buying. We're still seeing homes go um, under contract and into escrow. So there was a big change you know, in terms of the number of homes on the market and inventory, but um, that's something to consider if you're a seller is, you know, you may not want to wait. And Scott had mentioned last week that right now, if you're a seller, you're working off of comps from the last six months, which was a good market. So when you need to get an appraisal done and things like that, you're looking at good comps going forward three or four months from now, they're going to start looking at comps right now. And if there's a shift in the market, you know, it can change what your, your value is at that point. So it's something to consider as a seller. Awesome. So, uh, you want to uh, do you want to go over the condo slide too, or is that sure. just pretty much yeah, the, the, we, can, this? Right. we can hit the condo slide and then just over the real quick. Yeah, so just real quick, real same same thing. Um, it's condos were obviously hit a lot worse. Uh, condos are primarily a second home, vacation rental type investment here on a big island, and this condo market, although this is from the entire big island, is primarily driven by the west side of the island. The west coast of the island is where most of the condo inventory is. So if you see, there's a 60% a drop in the number of closed sales in April versus a year ago. So a huge drop. Uh, median price was about the same. It was down 5%, but we see that we see that fluctuate from month over month. So not a huge change there. And then new listings, just like the home market, down 47%. So people either pulled or didn't put their, home, their condos on the market um, this past month. So big change in the condo market. All right. So, so as, as my eyes start getting crossed now, because I've seen, I'm, I'm staring at numbers for too long. Uh, Scott, is there anything that that's, that's, that's different about what's going on with, you know, so Dylan's kind of showing us, you know, the, the thing here, you know, uh, the closed sales are way down. Uh, new listings are way down. Uh, is there anything different about Oahu's market other than some of the numbers wise, but is there anything kind of major or is Oahu generally following this same trend? Uh, no, there's actually some, some really interesting stuff. If I could share my screen, it might sure. be a little beneficial. Let me know when you can see it on your end. Yeah. Hold on. We've got, hold on. Wait, your screen is on. Okay. So just to kind of give some perspective, a little historic, uh, on the back, back in historic side of things, what I pulled up here is you have from 1985 through 2019, which is 35 years for single family homes our annual appreciation rate is 4.69% and the average appreciation rate is 4.4%. And for condos it's 4.5 and for uh, on the median and, and 4.65. So they're basically the same, right? Four and a half percent roughly log linear appreciation, which it doesn't do, you know, it's going to cycle some, but that's what you can kind of, uh, so just Thank you Thank you, but yeah. back, background perspective. If we look at, um, single family homes for the month of April, it's, there's some actually really interesting data and I geek out on this stuff cause I am a numbers guy, but I'm looking for trends. And part of that comes cause I have the development company and, and I deal with a lot of investment side stuff, but the closed sales were down 22% for April for single family homes island wide compared to April, 2019. The median sales price is up 5.5%, but I'm, I don't even look at that right now. We're, you know, we're basically, it's too small of a data set. I go to the year to date portion to look at the, um, the median sales price. And the interesting thing is, you know, we're two, two and a half months in on an old market that was doing really well. And that old market was trending right along at the, our historic average of four and a half percent roughly, which is good. Um, that's kind of a sustainable market, right? Um, now we've got a month and a half of data basically going into a completely different market that we're trying to figure out. So I don't look at that that April month's sales portion too much because I want to see more data um, just to make sure it's not skewed. But even just price wise, uh, year to date, 2020 to 2019, we're up 1.7% right now, which is pretty good considering. But the funny thing is, is median days on market dropped from 25 days last year in April to 19. So things are moving faster, even, th even though the the economy just got gummed up and froze and, and stopped. And, and what we're seeing is less listings coming on the market. Cause if you look at the line below that, our number of listings are off 45%. So it's like, okay, everyone kind of froze. We don't want, really want to come on the market. Median market, the only reason that's going to drop is because there's still buyer demand in the marketplace. And you see that in pending sales. 
pending sales for this past month are only off 7% from the previous month. So that's a hundred and some more transactions occurring than new listings coming on the market. So your inventory is, is tightening right now, um, which is fascinating to me because there's more buyers buying than listings coming on. And our months of inventory remaining went from 3.5 months to 2.5 months. And to give that perspective, a balanced market is six months uh, of inventory, meaning equal number of buyers and sellers on, in the market. That's supply, demand, balance. If you get below that, four, three to four or three to four months of inventory should yield about five percent price appreciation. We're now at 2.5 months of inventory, and during the boom back in 2007, 2006, 2007. We were at like 1.4 months of inventory. So we're getting into areas where, uh, okay, that's why you're seeing days on market drop. And even our list to sales price ratio um, jumped up a little bit from, you know, it's at 98% uh, list to sales price ratio. You know, you put a, your home on the market for hundred grand, you should expect to get 98.4% of that. And the active listings right now from this year to last year dropped 25%. So, um, I don't think this trend is going to continue. Um, I think it's, in other words, the buyer demand is there. The sellers are afraid to come on the market. We've got tightening inventory. I just showed property in Kailua two days last week. There were 20 showings in two days. We've got multiple offers. I submitted two offers. We got multiple offers on both those properties. I showed in Palolo. We had nine showings in two days and they were we were competing with multiple offers. So the buyer demand is there right now. Uh, and I, we can kind of get into, okay, what's going to happen in the future, maybe a well, year. Uh, so, okay. So here's, so here's my, my, my question for, 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 for both you guys is that, okay, saw some numbers. My eyes are still kind of crossed, even though I'm, I'm, I, I consider myself a numbers guy. Uh, I just got fed a whole bunch of percentages. I kind of get some sense of uh, sort of what's going on, but you know, from a layman's point, point of view, what do you think this means? What does this mean? What's going on? Uh, Any of you, either of you. Well, I mean, what's going on is sellers were afraid to come on the market. You know, you close down the economy and you only do that because you're concerned about health and safety, right? Which um, in doing so, every homeowner goes, I don't want strangers in my home. So I'm going to delay going on the market if I don't have to go on now or if if I'm living in there, I have my kids in there. And, and that's what's happened. That's why you see a drop in the number of new listings by 45%. It's, hey, you know, we don't want people in our homes. We're going to hold off as long as we can. But the buyer demand stayed. People that were in the market or people that were looking to buy, it, it held pretty well during this time. So now you have you just had this where we were already in a tight inventory at three and a half months of inventory. Um, it, the inventory dropped even more, so it got even more restricted. So now you have even more restricted supply and people willing to buy. And it's keeping our market very much in line with where we were. Nothing's changed the stay at home order that's going to be lifted and we're starting to ease stuff is actually going to change that portion. And I'll, I'll just show you this real quick. Uh, on my So, while, so while you're getting that part ready, I, I want to get Dylan's take on, on, on what, what you see. I mean, what's the word on the streets, so to speak uh, in Kona or what, you know, what's your take on, on this? I, I think the simple take is that it's, there is no crisis. You know, I mean, I think the news and, Sometimes perceptions and social media can make things feel or look worse than they are. And the reality is you have to look at people's behavior and people's behavior is not reflecting that right now. You know, going back to what Scott's saying, people are still buying, you know, the, the, there, isn't, um, there isn't a huge crisis right now in, in the real estate market. And if you're waiting for some enormous drop and great deals in the future, so far, based on the April numbers, that's that's not necessarily going to happen. It's not a it's not a safe bet that that's going to happen. So, um, you know, I think the the big takeaway just from the April numbers, and again, you know, we got to see. It seems like things are lining up and going to go back to normal here. So, it's not going to be as bad as I think maybe people's perceptions of it were thirty days ago when this all started. Well, one one takeaway I got from what both you guys were were saying is that it seems that the market is is t has tightening up. Uh, Oahu's the, the 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 inventory is kind of shrinking. Now this may all change. The 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 comps may change, etc. But it it almost seems to me somewhat maybe counterintuitively that 
right now might be a pretty good time to sell because the prices haven't dropped. There's a demand that's still there. This is not a bad time to sell, which normally one might not think that is a good time to sell right now. Is, is, uh, go ahead. And that, yeah, that, that definitely depends on what kind of property you have, right? I mean, there's definitely pockets where if you live in a resort community that's primarily a vacation rental uh, market and, you know, investors and second home buyers are buying there, now now's definitely not a good time. I mean, how are you going to sell a vacation rental based off of vacation rental income when there are no vacation rentals right now? So if that all returns and things go back to normal, then, hey, you know, maybe it's a good time. Maybe those people want to hold off. If you live in a regular neighborhood where local people who have to go to work every day want to live, there's no reason not to put your house in the market right now. Those people are still buying. My house was a perfect example of that. I'm seeing that um, almost uh, since this thing started, we've been putting at least one property into escrow every week. And it's usually some type of, uh, you know, just local buyer who is lives here, who wants to purchase for the first time. Lots of still first time home buyers that are buying that are just going to continue on with life. You know, they're not going to stop right now and and uh, you sit on their hands just because all of this stuff is going on. They're still looking at property and they're still buying. So basically, if you got a, if you have a residential home, you're good. If you have an Airbnb special, forget about it. Scott, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing too is keep in mind that interest rates just dropped the historic lows and they dropped by more than 1%. So now you've added also on the buy side, a good opportunity. So not only did the buyer demand not diminish, but you actually might've added more buyers to the market during this time frame because of the historic rates, uh, you know, the lows in rates. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, we just had a, a little, a quick uh, shout out here from from KT. Uh, glad you found, I'm KT, glad you found the show. Uh, glad you're here and uh, uh, we're, 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 great. we're super happy to have you a part of it. Okay, Scott, now you had some other things that you wanted to kind of to share? You want to bring yeah. your, uh, so, so let me know when your screen is ready. So, okay. All right. Stand by. All right. All right go. So I, I think, so part of this is, I, I feel like there's a snapshot of what we have going on, which is, um, you know, we shut down the economy. Essentially, everyone wants to stay at home. You have the 14 day quarantine and, and everything just kind of froze. And okay, what comes out of the back end of this? Because this this freezing of the economy and freezing of kind of what we're doing is, is a short term thing. And as we start to loosen, which they're starting to now, okay, what happens next? Um, where are we going from here? And and so there, we keep track of some some back end data, which is actually pretty interesting. So what you're looking at here is number of new listings, and we have it for the week, uh, you know, to May fourth. And on the side over here, we have seven, what happened in the last seven days, what happened in the last 30 days? Number of new listings in the last seven days for Oahu is down 38% from the previous year or you know, previous month last year. And for the last 30 days is down 42%. You can see in the graph here, we've bottomed out on that. And I think I'm starting to feel more listings coming on the market. I've got three or four people now that we're prepping the homes to come on mid month, mid this month to the end of this month anticipating the stay at home order getting lifted because of the restricted supply. Now's the time to come on the market as a seller. Um, so I think what we're going to see is more listings coming on the market going forward now as we open this up. But, but the big question going forward now is the only buyers we really have in the market are on Island buyers because of the quarantine. And there was an article that came out the other day that said, okay, when do we anticipate to open up the economy to tourists, which is the article said they're anticipating the end of July. All right, well, we if we get more listings coming on the market and still just the same buyer pool here and we've eliminated anybody off island, okay, now what happens? Because now you start to increase the inventory, um, but you're not increasing the buyer pool. Is the buyer pool that's here already able to absorb the increased listings that come on the market? Um, the longer this shakes out, the more restrictions we have on how we run our economy. Um, and, and that even goes to social distancing. I mean, you open restaurants at 50% capacity, that's 50% of the amount of revenue that a restaurant owner can, can earn. It trickles down everywhere. Um, okay, how does this affect us in the long run for the rest of this year? Um, I do think the buy opportunity in general will be when the stay at home is lifted. Um, and having at least more choices coming on the market at that time. 
so I'm so the, so the big thing for me is I'm going to be wondering about kind of how. Here's my here's my my general sense. My general sense is that um, the people who the the locals, my and this is just gut from nothing more than basically gut, right? Uh, with a little with a little bit of your guys' data, my my gut says that that the local folks are going to hold. Uh, you know, un unless I've got to sell my house, uh, I'm going to hold on to it because it's it's probably okay. It's not falling apart. I might be outgrowing it, but there's nothing that tells me I can't kind of hold on to it a little bit longer. I'm going to hold on to this house because I don't want to risk you know, a crazy market that's a little bit, un you know, like right now the numbers look good, but that doesn't mean that the numbers are going to look good next month. Maybe we get some, you know, Hawaii, Hawaii's at what, some 37, 40% unemployment rate. Um, and and our and and our wise leader is going to keep us shut down for another month. Um, you know, God knows they're they're saying recovery ain't going to uh, start from the visitor industry until, like you said, July. God knows what's going to happen then. You know, um, was a Warren Buffett Warren Buffett sold all his holdings in the airlines. That tells me that he doesn't see the airlines coming back anytime soon. Airlines is our lifeblood. Who knows what's going to happen? So, I think that. You know, people are going to hold their the the locals are going to hold the are going to hold their their real estate. So there may be some kind of horse trading going on until them the visitors come back. The I think the big the big huge question mark is going to be about you know the 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 import buyers buying in. Now, one thing that's interesting to me about the import buyers is going to be as we go forward, Hawaii already is you know argu no no not arguably objectively speaking, Hawaii is the cleanest covid free spot in america we are the most covid free so i can see a certain class of people who kind of want to escape this and they're independently wealthy they don't have to worry about making money they've got their whatever uh you know great time to buy and move to a place you know if you've been thinking about buying in hawaii and you've and you're financially independent you don't have to worry about the job market here locally it might be a perfect time to buy and move yourself in i know that that makes any sense at all but there's my gut right there dylan what what's what's your sense of that so, you know, exactly along those lines, I have at least five conversations a week with, um, you know, clients or contacts that I've been talking to for a while that are saying, you know, I was thinking about moving there in two years or I was thinking about retiring in three or four years. But given what has happened and, you know, if you're living in a big city right now, you probably are rethinking whether or not that's where you want to be when something like this happens. And at the end of the day, you know, it's not fun no matter where you are, but Hawaii is a pretty good place to be when something like this happens. And so I think there's going to be some pretty significant pent up demand once things do open up. I'm already having, you know, multiple conversations a week with people saying, hey, you think it's safe to book at the end of June? You think it's safe to book in the end of July? Um, we want to rebook our they were planning to come, you know, in March or April, but had to had to push it back for uh, lockdown reasons. But um, I think those people are going to I'm, I'm not I'm almost, not, you know, looking at not having a day off in July because there's going to be so many people here, I think, wanting to buy at that point, as long as everything clears up and they open they open the flights back up, which right now looks like that's pretty likely. I mean, the, the, the trend of the cases are going down. I mean, it's kind of happening everywhere, but it's definitely happening here. I think we only had three new cases yesterday or something like that. I mean, it's in the, it's, it's in the it's low for, single it's for all practical purpose, for all practical purposes in a, in a, in Honolulu city of a million people or statewide, a state of a 1.4 million, they have two or three or four cases. You, you might as well say zero. There's really, it's, it's kind of, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty much done. It's under, it's under control. So, yeah, you know, all sure. of those folks who were one looking to come in the last couple of months that needed to delay, or maybe we're looking to come next year and want to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, we're going to be seeing those folks. So, so back to what Scott was saying about, you know, there may be more listings coming on the market. Will it balance out with the number of just local buyers that we have on island? Um, you know, that's also going to be counteracted with, uh, I think, an increased demand of folks, you know, not necessarily coming to vacation. You know, the vacationers may not come back right away. But if you are looking to move and purchase property, you're going to get on a plane as soon as possible and come and do it. So, you know, that may be your, your intent is not necessarily to come here and just sit on the beach. You may just come for four or five days to actually do a buying trip and you know, look at stuff and figure out your plan. And those are the folks that are going to rebalance the amount of increased inventory we're probably going to see in the next couple of months. So which which almost kind of tells me that I'm I'm kind of sensing that. OK, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe all the Airbnbs have been declared non-essential. So you can't you can't legally check into an Airbnb. 
Now you certainly, again, forget about the visitors. And I, I put out that video on, on, on the channel, you know, don't come to Hawaii. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, and I, and I don't want to encourage any visitors to break any laws. It's the 14 day quarantine. Please don't take this video to construe that, you know, you should be taking a, you're a, frankly, you're a fool, right? You're a fool. If you take a two week vacation in Hawaii right now, cause you're going to be in your hotel. You know, there was a side note, you know, there was a story, I don't know if you guys caught this, but there was a discussion at the legislature that what they're thinking about, I don't know if this is not a law yet, but they're thinking about um, as a way to kind of keep people holed up in their rooms, uh, you get to check into your hotel room and they don't give you the key. You can't lock your room. How's that one, right? <laughs> how's that way? How's that for a way to keep you locked in your room? They don't give you the key. So you can't, you can't lock your room. You can't go back in. So anyway, um, be that as it may. So I'm kind of seeing maybe another sort of another, if I think about sort of opportunity or think about what people want, I could almost see a potential opportunity for people who have short-term rentals. And if you want to rent your unit for, let's say a three month period for people who want to come and do a real estate tour, follow the law, you come into a short-term rental, you stay quarantined for 14 days, don't break any laws. But after the 14th day period expires, you're, you're a free person. And now you can kind of explore and look around in, a, in somewhat of a pristine market in Hawaii um to explore and see if you know the real you can find the right real estate property for you that's that's a potential scott yeah i mean it, a couple of things on that I, I mean i've got a client that has seven airbnbs and they're all empty luckily he's he's in a, a good financial position to be able to carry but the discussion we had with him right off the bat i said look airbnb is the largest hotel operator technically in the world bigger than any other hotel chain and the, you know they're all empty. People aren't able to come here and even do the Airbnb portion. So the, the Airbnb side here, which is mainly going to be Waikiki, is really significantly getting affected. Move it to long-term rentals, right? Um, do something. You know, you got to rather than it sit totally empty, even if you cut the rents on it, you know, you get it rented out in some capacity, even for a longer-term portion. Um, but I, but going back to a little bit on the eco economic portion, you know. If until we open up the state, we're circulating money within within the economy here, which is just trading money back and forth between the locals. You don't grow an economy that way. You have to have an export. Our export happens to be tourism, which brings money into the state, which allows the economy to grow. And as long as we have the, any restrictions in place, we can't get back to exactly where we were. So we're going to have some kind of economic um, effect from that. I don't, and it, to me, it, it has to correlate to prices in some kind of, um, or, or, you know, housing and uh, housing prices in some kind of effect. I don't know that we're going to have much of a drop, but there are a couple of opportunities that are pretty fabulous that are really interesting out there that I see. And, and part of it correlates to exactly what you guys are saying. If you got an Airbnb unit and you've got no rental income on it, you know, what is that thing worth at this point? When are you going to be able to get that income back? And when is it going to be back at the same level that it was three, four months ago? Uh, so, you know, how do you value those? You know, the other, the other factor with the, with the Airbnbs and the vacation rentals is if the, you know, if the visitors don't return right away, we may see an increase in inventory because people need to sell those and not everybody's in a cash carrying position to, um, continue to pay those, especially if it's a condo or those maintenance fees, if they have a mortgage on it, that mortgage. So that may play into inventory also if the tourist visitor industry doesn't rebound quickly. And, you know, we got six, 12 months of 30, 40% decrease in the number of visitors that are coming. That's definitely going to play into the inventory aspect of this. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's, you know, there's an ar argument uh, out there that those, these Airbnbs take up uh, housing units that normal folks would normally buy and live in. So just because it is an Airbnb doesn't mean it can't be used as a single family residence or a regular long-term residence or a long-term rental. So we may see some of that shift also where Airbnb shift into long-term rentals or go on the market and folks that are looking for a place to, to live and not necessarily rent, purchase those. So that, 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 that'll definitely be a dynamic we'll, we'll see, I think in the next few months. Well, well, to me, I'm, I'm kind of, to me, my, my sort of headline is, you know, until the, un, until the visitor industry, until we see a signs of a, a visitor industry that's rebounding in a, in a healthy way and we see some kind of a curve, 
you know, in many ways, all bets are off. I mean, we've got the, we've got this sort of, like Scott was saying, this current sort of internal rotation where locals are switching houses, basically. Dylan, you, you know, you sold your house to a local family and you just bought a house from another local family, right? So it's like mm -hmm. families kind of moving inventory around, um, which is going to work for a little while. But, you know, until if this, if this visitor industry, you know, doesn't rebound in a pretty, you know, predictable way, all bets are off. All bets are off. We're, you know, $17 billion a year economy right now. We're at zero. Um, when the airlines are going to come back, when flights are going to start arriving, how they're going to make that happen, how they're going to do that. Those are all up in the air. Um, and there's a huge trickle down effect with that also, huge. because if you, if you, you know, there's plenty of people who live uh, or who live here, who work in a restaurant, who make very good money, even just, you know, at a high end restaurant at Roy's or something. And, you know, they make a hundred thousand a year with their tips and their, their regular salary. They, they could be a buyer right now. They're not, they're out of the market because there is no income. They're on unemployment, whatever the case is. And with the way that lenders have um, changed their guidelines since this has hit, you know, you, before you you could, if you were on like short term unemployment, continue to move through a transaction. Right now, they're pretty much saying, "No, no way, we're not doing anything with you until you're fully employed again and you have two paychecks." So that's a that's a big piece. Is there's a big piece of the buyer pool, the local buyer pool who work here who are, are out of the market right now because if they're on some type of unemployment or furlough, uh, lenders are not giving them loans at this moment. So that'll be interesting to see, you know, how that affects the long-term aspect because there's so many people who make their income based off of that visitor industry. So, you know, that's a really good point. Uh, what's let's, let's, let's shift that a, a little bit. Uh, and by the way, everybody, uh, Dylan has kind of asked us if, there, if there's any questions, if you do have any questions, throw them into the chat and I'll try to bring them up and we'll try to, to address them. This is your chance. It's nine 30. I want to keep this on certainly to under an hour. Um, and, uh, but if you have any questions, just kind of shoot them, but let's kind of shift this a little bit. What is going on with the banks? What's what's I mean, Scott? Now you had some insight from uh, you have a, a, a close friend that is in the banking industry. What's the kind of what's the word on the street as far as I mean, what's legally occurred and what's what's the word on the street of, of, of what of what's coming up? I mean, there's a there's a couple of things. Uh, for one, when the market started to the stock market started to go down, um, it dropped significantly. That dropped interest rates, but um, lenders obviously saw the, the writing on the wall at that point, they, they started getting flooded with refinances and um, the credit market started to seize up and the, the federal government had to step in on the back end and, and stabilize that um, with the number of refis, uh, banks started actually raising their interest rates just to kind of hold off the, the amount of demand. Plus they started to get nervous going, okay, where are we going with this market? And you know we don't want to be giving loans to a bunch of people that technically on paper look good, but here in two months, they may not, and they may go belly up. So they tighten their guidelines, you know, bigger down payment, higher FICO scores, more reserves. Um, even VA started tightening their guidelines because they're obviously they're guaranteeing the loan at hundred percent financing. So um, the bank's natural reaction is to get more restrictive so that if there is damage coming down the road, they're not stuck with a bunch of loans that, that default on them. Um, but in general, uh, now that things have stayed, uh, at least on the stock market side and whatnot, we're seeing, you know, rates, they're about 3.25% or 3% for VA right now, which is really good. A couple of months, two months ago, you're at four and four and a half percent. Um, but the guidelines are a little tighter. And that's kind of the main, and, and the main aspect. There, what I'm also seeing is they're, they're being, they're being very careful about ensuring that everything is accurate. So, um, they are, they're calling the day of funding to make sure that that borrower is still employed. And I've seen several transactions cancel right at the, the last minute because a uh, borrower's hours were cut or they were laid off and they didn't tell anybody. They thought maybe they could just get, get the loan closed and then move forward and figure it out. But we're seeing that the, the, the banks, I mean, they, they, they're supposed to do that. Sometimes they're not as, I think, diligent about it, but they're definitely verifying right up until the last minute that nothing has changed with their employment because if, if something has, they're, they're pulling the plug on the loan. So this is another, so this is clearly another dynamic that's going to affect that, that whether it's short term or long term, we're not sure. But again, until the, until this thing starts to recover, kind of all bets are off, right? Because yeah, you got reduced. Go, go ahead, Dylan. You, yeah, you, I'm, you, I'm telling everybody that I'm in a transaction with, whether I'm on the buyer side or the seller side, you know, if they're, if they're my buyer client, I'm telling them, you know, please communicate with me if anything 
weird happens you know if there's even a discussion about your hours being cut or a furlough coming you need to let us know because we need to let the lender know and we don't want to drag this on further than it has to and if you do then you start doing things like putting your earnest money at risk you know if you miss out if, if you end up getting conditional loan approval when you shouldn't have because something had changed you didn't tell anybody so that's one piece of it and i'm also asking if i'm on the seller side asking that buyer's agent you know please check with your buyer let's make sure that we're having this open conversation and not letting anything happen that is going to jeopardize this transaction because if if bad news doesn't get better with time right if something bad's going to happen let's let's figure it out now and make a decision now and banks are being pretty quick about giving you a determination one way or the other if they can move forward or not so that's an important conversation to have and if you're going through some type of real estate transaction right now keep that in mind you know it's it's just the right thing to do for all parties concerned that if you know you have any type of shakiness in your financial situation let let the let, let your agent know um let your mortgage broker know and maybe they can figure out a solution and get you through it but if not you might as well pull the plug as early as possible and not not put yourself in it into any type of jeopardy to to um for forfeit your earnest money or anything like that so so right now all right so i think we're going to start to wrap this up it's 9 36 we don't we we must have our audience of 17 completely mesmerized because no one's <laughs> asked any questions yet god bless you all um but uh, so okay so look so one of our one of our audiences is you know folks on the mainland that are looking to buy a home in hawaii um so you know given all that we've kind of talked about you know what with if someone calls you and i'm sure you've gotten those calls and they're saying hey you know we've been kind of thinking about buying uh let's just say uh you know our our jobs aren't you know we're 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 we've we're financially kind of set um you know is is now a good time to you know is now a good time to buy should i or should we wait what's what's your guys response to that scott why don't you start that off how do, how do you answer that uh i mean yeah it definitely is it but i feel like the portion to me, the op there's two opportunities here. There's a couple that, and some of what I looked at last night, I was blown away. But once the stay or once the quarantine portion is lifted, I feel like there's going to be inventory come over here at the beginning because I feel like there will be more inventory to choose from at that time, and things will have relaxed a little bit. Um, I feel like you can get in at that point, and where. I feel like the opportunity is, which I looked last night, which goes back to the Airbnb portion, is I look at Waikiki. If you look at a million dollar plus condos for the last six months, so there's 94 condos on the market in Waikiki over a million dollars. In the last six months, 30 sold. In the last 30 days, one sold and there's zero in escrow. So you don't want to talk about an opportunity. That's it right there. And those those numbers show it. What's that opportunity? I mean, it. Well, you, you just went from essentially, so Waikiki was struggling a little bit from that transient accommodation bill, right? So there was more inventory coming on and, and some softness in Waikiki because it is a, such a second home market. And then when you eliminated some of the, the ability to Airbnb, some of those people came on the market. But what the opportunity is to get in the buy side, because if there's one sale in 30 days, the, the sales just dropped on the million dollar plus. If if there's 94 on the market, that's 94 months of inventory. I just showed you guys stats where we're at 2.5 months of inventory for the island wide. And that one's at 94 months. That's insane. Oh, that's so you're saying, so you're saying there's like so much right now, there's technically way excess inventory way excess. in my key, way and excess. To give you perspective, at the bottom of the 2008 market, when we hit uh, 14 months of inventory remaining for the island, we dropped 11%. You're talking 94 months of inventory, right? Now, I'm not saying the bottom is going to drop out on Waikiki, but you got you can't tell me there's not people in Waikiki that were dependent on rental in, Airbnb rental income that need to sell in 94 units that are sitting there at a million plus with no no beginning in sight of when you're going to get any income on. Okay, I think I, I smell that one coming, right? You got all these, basically, you got these potentially Airbnbs or whatnot sitting in Waikiki that had, you know, high mortgages, whatever, leveraged out because they were doing well under Airbnb. And now the whole market's literally dead. It died. And, and so Dana got it. Got it. For sure. And Leeward or Windward Coast as well, because those are second homes kind of markets. So that whole thing is going to is now. So, so Dylan, is there any kind of a similar movement? I mean, you, you went into your, your, your condo, but sort of word on the street is you, are you catching anything in that same nature in, in, on the Kona side where there may be a bunch of sort of Airbnbs that have been over leveraged that now they're, they're, they're getting ready to, to, to dump them. Have you been hearing anything empirically for you guys? Um, 
you know, not not really. I mean, I don't have any hard evidence of that. I mean, I've definitely had conversations with clients and I've put a few units on the market that are currently empty where they had maybe been thinking about selling. They wanted to maybe upgrade in the future and they thought, well, if it's sitting there empty right now, I might as well put it in the market right now. So um, th those definitely have come on the market. Um, you know, the other piece to the to the the Airbnb market is what going forward are, you know, are people still going to want to invest in them? Because this is a, for the last, you know, 10 years, it's been like a cash cow, right? I mean, I've had people buy multiple Airbnbs. It's a great, I mean, it's a great investment because you, you can cash flow it and then you get appreciation on that initial investment also over time. So arguably, you know, you can do case studies and show that there is no better uh, type of investment appreciation wise over, you know, the, the medium to long run than a, a short term rental piece of real estate. And is that going to overall affect people's mindsets right now that, hey, maybe it's not as good of an idea to invest in that because something like this can change everything in the blink of an eye and really turn it up on its head. So it'll be interesting to see that, you know, that market has been super hot. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant market of people come in and buying even a little condo. If you just want to get your foot into the Hawaii real estate market, come, o come over and you can buy a $300,000 condo you know, have a little five, $600 a month maintenance fee, pretty reasonable. And you can run the numbers. And if you put enough money down and your, your mortgage is, is decent, you know, you can cash flow at a few hundred bucks a month. So you're making a little bit of money and then you have a place to stay for a couple of weeks when you come uh, every year. And in five or six years, you know, you're going to have 15, 20% appreciation and then you can, you can sell it and make some money. So that was a pretty standard, easy decision to make for a lot of people. And I think that mindset's going to change a little bit. And then back to kind of the selling, you know, back to Scott's point about all the additional inventory, I'm definitely seeing anecdotally, you know, in my world, people getting some pretty good deals right now because of the seller uncertainty. So buyers in this little window, you know, may not go forever, but in this window right now, buyers have some, have some buying power and I'm seeing people make offers considerably less, you know, 10, 15% less than the list price and then either getting them accepted or getting a really little counter offer, you know, not back to 98% of list price, you know, maybe back to just a couple percent more to cover some closing costs where sellers are taking a lot less than, or being a lot softer on negotiation than they were three or four months ago. Uh, so that's interesting. So to me, it almost smells like the ideal, the ideal profile would be, um, someone who um, you know went to came to Hawaii that looked for real estate they found the place that they wanted but they went back and they're in the mainland they know the place they've seen it uh, and they've been on the fence and but they could buy it right now and they know exactly what they're buying because they went there earlier they saw the place in person they can't go there now because of a 14-day quarantine but they saw it this would be the time to kind of make not to say the crazy offer but this is the time to kind of make a, a, a competitive offer if that house that you looked at and kind of wanted is still on the market. That's, that's, that's what I'm smelling. Absolutely. Scott. Yeah. The, yeah. The opportunity, like I said, last week in any market, there's opportunities that present themselves and, and you can't play the market. You got to go for the opportunity that presents itself in front of you. It's, it's as simple as that. Cause there's too many times I see people going, I'm going to wait, I'm going to time the market. I want to time the bottom of the market. And you never even, first of all, you don't even see it until it's too late and it's already going back up again and, and inventory is restricted. And, you know, and then there, you don't see the, what is it? You can't see the forest through the trees, so to speak. You get so blinded on trying to figure out the market and, and everything that you miss the opportunity that comes up right in front of you. I'm, I'm heavy on the buy side right now with us in the investment group and stuff. We, we are wanting to buy. We feel this is a good buy time to set us up for the next 10 years. Sure seems like it. It's not a, we're not looking at something for a two year kind of hold time frame. We're looking at three plus is what our hold time frame is. So, uh, so this, is, this has been great. Uh, I can't think of anything that I need to know right now. And we, we don't have any. So, and, and Katie, KT, K, Katie has said there's tons of info to digest. That's why we're not. Uh, and, you know, Alex, I'd be curious about, you know, he said, why is everyone we're waiting until virus is gone or stable? Yeah. But, you know, again, you're going to lose out on some potential opportunities. There's, there's, you could hold, there's a, there's a good reason to hold and it's a good reason to move. Anyway, is there anything that you guys, that, that we missed that we didn't talk about that you kind of want to, to share as we kind of wrap this up? Anything? I'm kind of done. No, I'm good. I think that was a good discussion. There's uh, lots of interesting stuff. And again, if anybody's got any questions, you can always get us offline. We'll repost this stuff. So we're available. Absolutely.
Yep. I, I got one for you, Dylan. Um, the that pricing segment that it's showing for this, I mean, do you attribute to that just being too little of, of a data set for this month and we need to see a little more data to, to understand where the median price is going to go on a, on uh, the big island? Yeah, I, I think the that April last year was a was an anomaly. It was just a it was just a weird month where a lot of low, low end stuff sold, so that it pulled the median price down. So yeah, I don't think that was a um, that was a good data point to use. It just I wanted to keep it uniform with all of the rest of the stuff on there. But definitely, I'm with you. I mean, year to date is definitely a better data set to use because it gives you a bigger picture on where we're at. Yeah, more consistent. All right, cool. This has been great, guys. Uh, we'll be, as Dylan said, we'll be reposting this on our on our new YouTube channel for real estate. I'll probably be breaking it up too to kind of break this up into a couple of segments as well. Uh, it's been great. Uh, the 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 Friday talk has been like superb. Um, I still don't know what the hell is going on, but I guess I have a better idea to think about uh, how to think about it. Uh, all right, all right, you guys. Uh, have a great one. Have a great week. And uh, folks, will we may do this again next week. We haven't made firm plans yet. We we may, we may not. It's going to depend on your feedback and what we get, and if we have something that's worth talking about. Dylan, have a good one. Scott, have a good one, guys. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks, have a good one. See you guys later. Take care.